A unique thing about tabletop role-playing games is that when you buy them, you're mostly just buying rules. Some rulebooks also describe in-game items, and some even come with a sample adventure tacked on at the end, but the thing you carry from game to game is a book on how to play, not what to play. This model was created by the world's first role-playing game, Dungeons & Dragons. Historically, you were expected to sketch out your own game board, call it a dungeon, and then apply the rules to it. In fact, the inside cover of the first edition of D&D had a legend of dungeon map symbols so you knew how to annotate your game board. Today, game masters still sketch out their dungeons on dry erase boards or on virtual tabletop software. Building your own adventure is one of the most empowering aspects of tabletop RPG. All you really need are rules and maybe some random dungeon tables, and you've got an infinite number of games. In addition to that infinite number, I've got five good reasons you should be designing your own adventure for your favorite RPG. I don't know whether to count up or down, I'll do both. Five or one, zero preparation. No exaggeration, building your own adventure requires no preparation. You can build an adventure as you play. Tell your players they're outside of an ancient tomb that they've heard contains untold wealth, or a deep space mine, or a cyberpunk office space, or a post-apocalyptic bunker, whatever's appropriate. Once they go inside, draw a room on a scrap of paper or dry erase mat, add two closed doors, and describe some random items in the room. Repeat this for each room that they enter, adding in some interesting items, aggressive monsters, interesting characters to mix things up. I do this at least once at every gaming convention I attend, when a game master is suddenly unable to make it to their session, or when there's a group of latecomers with no game to play. A spontaneous game of D&D is a superpower. Four, or two, zero commitment. There are many times when I want to play D&D &D exactly one time. Finding a good gaming group, for instance, it's a little like assembling a rock band. You need the right people because you're signing up to meet with them every week for a few hours. If you don't get on, that's not going to be a lot of fun. So when a group of strangers get together to play a game, I like to play a short adventure from start to finish so that we all have the guilt-free opportunity to gracefully opt out of future games if we need to. Other times, there's a group of players who just don't have any intention of playing together again in the future. An RPG shouldn't require a long-term commitment to play. You don't invite people over to a game of Monopoly with the subtext that they're going to have to meet with you for a weekly game of Monopoly until death do you part. Sometimes people just want one game of D&D, &D and that's okay. When you build your own spontaneous adventure, you can end it at any point. It's just a game. Nothing's written in stone. So the great treasure or big bad evil monster can show up whenever it's convenient. I'll go so far as to say that I think most people would end up playing a lot more D&D &D if they played it this way instead of committing to long-term campaigns. Three, zero cost. Once you've purchased a board game, you own that board game. Expansion packs notwithstanding, there are no further purchases. You own it, you can play it whenever. An RPG is no different. You bought the rulebook, maybe several of your friends have bought the rulebook. There don't have to be further purchases. Design your own dungeon, apply the rules. Four, or two, everybody is a player. With long, complex, published adventures, it's common for one person to play as game master because that one person has read and internalized the adventure and is actively tracking all the different components in play. In a campaign I ran from level 1 to 20 over the course of two years, there was no scripted villain because I was assembling it from several small adventures and homebrew content. Eventually, a villain arose, but only because I kept bringing her back up into different situations situations. She wasn't the main villain originally. She wasn't even a villain, but the players expressed distrust in her, and the more I brought her back, the more they demonized her. So by the end of it all, she was involved in a plot to summon Tiamat. That probably wouldn't have happened if my gaming group had switched out game masters every game or every adventure. It's hard to maintain a through line like that without a single author. But that kind of thing is really only an expectation when there's a concept of a campaign. If you focus more on your own character instead, ignoring the story of the world, then you don't need through lines or conspiracies or intricate plots. As long as your character levels up after a thousand experience points or gets a new skill after they earn 25 points of karma or whatever milestone you're looking for, 
That's all the story you need. When you uncouple the gaming experience from the story, you no longer need a single game master to keep track of the game world. Every session, a different player can be game master. They bring the dungeon, they run the dungeon, everybody wins or dies, depending. Five or one, casual gaming. I've met people who genuinely think that an RPG takes at least six hours to play, and that's not including building a character. I think some people have this impression because a lot of gamers spend that much time on their RPG. I don't blame them, it's fun. But I also have a short attention span, I guess, because I play for two hours. Admittedly, I play several times a week, but to me, a two hour session puts pressure on the group to focus on the game, and we usually get a lot more done, I think, in two hours than we do in longer games filled with socializing and indecision. My point is, D&D doesn't have to be a ritualistic undertaking. You can play an RPG over a long lunch break, in the evening after dinner before bed, on a ferry ride, whatever suits you. If you have time for a game of Clue, you have time for D&D, and one of those two games is better than the other. Those are five good reasons. See my separate video for five good reasons to play an officially sanctioned adventure instead? They're not mutually exclusive. You can do both, and you should. Thanks for watching.